Welcome to this Kalik Explains Finance video. This week, another topical one, should inverted yield curves worry investors? We've seen a little bit of an inversion recently. What does that mean and how nervous should you be? Okay, so the background to this is a flattening US yield curve stirs recession fears. So people worry when the yield curve changes from its normal upward sloping shape to a flatter and even an inverted shape. So let's take a look at why. That was the FT on the 7th of December. Now anything can happen, but at the 7th of December that was a situation. So basically, what are we looking at with the yield curve? Well essentially, if you were to plot yield over time, if you like, with time being how long dated the IOU you're looking at is. So if you're looking at US Treasury, as government IOUs, for example, what would you expect to see? And the answer is an upward sloping yield curve. So if that's yield going up the side here, broadly speaking, the longer you're prepared to give your money to the government, so let's say that's 10 years, that might be, say, three years, Basically, the longer you're prepared to give your money to the government in the form of buying one of the IOUs, the bigger the return you'd expect. As a term premium, you're taking more risk. You're locking your money up for longer, especially if people think interest rates, that's the one set by the Federal Reserve, will rise. Because don't forget, with a fixed income bond, and most government IOUs tend to be, you can't get any more coupon if interest rates rise. So you're relying on locking in the right price when you buy it in the first place. So an upward sloping yield curve looks like that. And I'm gonna show you another chart in a moment, but basically what started to happen is this sort of thing. The yield curve started to flatten, and some people have said, watch out, because down the short end, as it's known, down the shorter end, all right, anything out to about five years, we've even seen a little bit of this going on, a bit of inversion. So the term premium, narrowing and evaporating. Now there's another way of looking at that, which is to say that were you to look at the yield on a longer dated, in normal circumstances, IOU against a shorter dated, there'd be a positive gap. So you might expect to get, let's say, and I'm making numbers up, 3% on that one, and let's say, making the numbers up here, 1% on that one. So the gap would be 2%. Excuse my scribblings, I'll formalize this in a moment or 200 basis points. And the wider that gap, the steeper, if you like, the normal yield curve. However, what we've been seeing recently is the exact opposite. If you're comparing two relatively short-dated Treasury IOUs, or at what you actually find is that the gap between those yields has gone down and down and down and down and down to a point where it's almost gone negative. Okay, and that's what's starting to worry people, because they're saying if the term premium is evaporating, then what does that say about where people see the economy going in general? Now then, yield curve basics, just to summarize some of that stuff. So yields are what? The total annual return as a percentage of the current price of an IOU. I deal with this in more detail in the bond section of Killick Explains. I'll give you a reference at the end. As bond prices rise, fixed income yields fall and vice versa. So don't forget, on most of these things, the yield is, sorry, the coupon is fixed. Therefore, the price varies to change the yield, and they're quoted for different maturities. So the government borrow over different lengths of time, if you want to see it that way, so there are two year, five year, 10 year, and so on. Now, just to summarize some of that other stuff, a normal yield curve is upward sloping. So like that, as you're looking at me, if you like, the first line I drew on the graph, investors expect to be rewarded for taking time risk, it's called a term premium. Yields are therefore higher usually on longer dated bonds than shorter dated, and this creates the so-called normal upward slope. Now, bears would say, if the yield curve starts to invert, if spreads compress and even go negative, what does that mean? The bear case says, investors suddenly think, crikey, the Federal Reserve looks like it's gonna be raising rates into the future. Maybe, if things are going badly, it'll actually cut them. And if that happens, suddenly, there's a reversal in the way people think about what's called the term premium. And why would they cut rates? To head off an economic slowdown, that's the point. So. Risk aversion weakens the term premium, in other words, and longer yields may move above shorter and cause inversion, as it's called. So all of a sudden, you've got a situation where people are basically saying, uh-oh, if the economy heads into recession, we've got a problem. The spread between short-term and long-term treasury yields has dropped below zero ahead of seven of the last recessions, 
as Bloomberg put it, again, 7th December 2018. Now, the timing headache is this. So some people would say, well, actually, you don't get an immediate effect. When yield curves invert, if you look backwards, you don't see an immediate recession. And that is a problem. That's a problem with interpreting this as a definite signal of trouble ahead. So there is a bit of a timing headache. Inversions usually come well ahead of downturns. In August 2005, there was a big inversion that did predate, many would argue, the big downturn, the financial crisis and so on, but it took a while to come through. Okay, Recent temporary inversions, on the other hand, have signaled little. So there have been flattenings, inversions, if you like, at the short end in particular, that's uh, the shorter dated maturity IOUs, you want to see it that way, and people have said, well, that's actually done very little in terms of recession warning over the last few years. But going back a bit further, as I say, the last seven recessions, you could argue, were predated, albeit with the time lag, by one of these inversions, particularly where what you're seeing at the short end is then mirrored further out down the curve. Now, the economic backdrop at the moment, as if to make that point, is actually okay-ish. So the UK economy is going reasonably well. Corporate profitability this year has been fairly strong. And if you want a specific data snap, if you like, the US PMI, Purchasing Managed Index, rose in November to 59.3 from 57.7. So in the short term, some would say the economy doesn't look too bad, but bear in mind that time lag I mentioned. And then there are the technical factors. So people who don't read too much into an inverted yield curve would say there are some short-term technical reasons why at the short end in particular, you've had a squeeze on yields, as it were, the spread, the gap between yields. And those are, amongst other things, the big ones, banks setting aside capital at the year end, which can push up into bank funding costs and change the shape of the yield curve temporarily, is the argument. Short-term demand for US dollars following EM stress, emerging market stress, that can affect short-term rates. We've seen trouble in emerging markets uh, over the course of 2018, and that is reflected to some extent in the shape of the yield curve or one particular part of the yield curve. And the US Fed is reversing QE, so they're doing quantitative tightening, and depending on which type of IOU they pick on for that tightening process, that will alter the shape of the yield curve. So these will be people saying that actually, as a recession warning, watch out, because there are other factors at play which may not result in a recession. It's simply things going on around the edges which can influence the way the yield curve looks. Now, you pay your money and take your choice. Somebody's going to be right, somebody's going to be wrong. For investors, therefore, what's the message? The message is, as ever, end of the year is a good time to review portfolio positioning. Okay. Be aware that inverted yield curves have, in the past, signaled trouble from time to time. But I would say we're not at panic stations yet. Further out along the yield curve, the spread has remained fairly low and consistent. So you've got a sort of flattening going on, but no signs of inversion. So keep an eye on the short end and look for a sort of ripple effect or a more consistent period of yield curve inversion. At that point, then sure, you might want to be looking at the risk in your portfolio and taking steps to reduce it. Editor at killick.com for emails and killick.com forward slash learn the bonds tab for anyone wanting more background and detail on fixed income IOUs and the yield curve in general.